Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office with another detailed severe weather forecast. As you already know, over the last couple of days, the Storm Prediction Center has a 30% risk for big time severe weather on Monday, possibly a substantial severe weather outbreak. But that's not all. On day 5, there's a slight risk of severe weather spanning all the way from Wisconsin and Iowa into Illinois, as well as Missouri down across northeastern Texas and northeastern. Northern Louisiana. So what are the numerical weather models telling us for Monday afternoon on the 15th of April? Well, they're telling us that there's going to be a surface slow that rapidly develops across eastern Colorado into western Kansas. There's going to be an air mass response. So once that deepens, we're going to have southeasterly flow overspreading the high plains into the deep south on Monday. But that's not all. This is really going to help to encourage severe thunderstorms to develop into intense supercells over northern Texas, portions there of Oklahoma, as well as Kansas. You can see some of these bean-shaped storms. Yes, those are nasty supercells that are likely to develop along the dry line. And then, of course, we could have supercells developing along the warm front over Iowa, northern Missouri, and even for portions of central Illinois into southeastern North Dakota and South Dakota. By Tuesday morning, that surface low moves into Nebraska, triggering still the threat for severe weather into eastern Texas, into Arkansas, as well as Missouri. And that is why the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted a 15% risk for severe weather all the way from northeastern Texas in Arkansas, Missouri, as well as Illinois, eastern portion there of Iowa and southern Wisconsin. By Tuesday afternoon and evening, there will be more intense thunderstorms developing along that cold front dry line by the evening hours. So if you're coming home from work, just be aware there's going to be some nasty thunderstorms all the way from Wisconsin all the way to, say, if you're in Illinois, if you're in uh, portion there of Indiana, as well as Arkansas, southeastern Missouri. You have strong thunderstorm potential likely developing here. And then once the cold front tries to catch up with the dry line, we could have another rebursting of severe thunderstorms developing by Wednesday morning over Indiana into Kentucky, as well as Tennessee, all the way across perhaps the deep south. But what does the GFS model have to tell us? Well, this is a global forecasting system, the American model, and it is showing nearly the same thing as I told you on the Euro model, indicating that there will be some severe, intense, long-tracked supercells developing along that dry line, moving towards the northeast into central Oklahoma, as well as southeastern Kansas by the afternoon and evening hours. But the GFS does something a little different than what the Euro is showing. It does indicate that we could have a lot of clustering of severe thunderstorms developing over Kansas and Missouri by Tuesday morning, becoming slightly more elevated in nature, but still surface-based. And then, of course, we have some showers and severe thunderstorms that could develop along that warm front. And then, of course, by the time we go into Tuesday afternoon into the evening hours, we get that severe thunderstorm threat really ramping up over Illinois, portions of Wisconsin, as well as Indiana into Arkansas as that surface low really gets spinning. And then maybe a renewed threat of severe weather by Wednesday early morning over Indiana as that cold front swings on through. Now you may be wondering what is behind, what's the culprit of this severe weather setup coming up for Monday, Tuesday, and even into Wednesday? Well, when we take a look at the 500 millibar chart here, this is the vorticity, how much spin is in the atmosphere, how much upper level energy is being exerted. So going forward here, we can see there's a trough over California. That's going to be the culprit behind all of this. But watch, once this gets into the high plains, we're going to have rapid pressure falls, cyclogenesis going on because we have rapid height falls, temperatures cooling aloft and that destabilizes the atmosphere so once that moisture moves northward and we overlap the ingredients here of steep lapse rates with a lot of instability oh man it's a trigger mechanism for severe thunderstorms big time in fact over oklahoma kansas and northern texas again the storm prediction center has been mentioning a substantial severe weather event could be unfolding for Monday into Tuesday, perhaps a severe weather outbreak. You don't hear that very often, okay? 
And then that trough moves into the high plains, the northern high plains, that is, by Wednesday or by Tuesday night into Wednesday. And with that, we're going to see a lot of energy spreading itself into the upper Midwest by Wednesday. And that trough is going to kick out of here by Thursday. So now that was looking at the upper level dynamics, let's take a look at the surface. We have dew points that are going to be advancing northward here. Look at these numbers. 60, mid 60s to upper 60s, perhaps even some low 70 dew points down here in central and southern Texas. Here is your dry line that is going to be sharpening over western Texas. Look at these dew points in the single digits, and that's a recipe for supercell beasts. And it gets even more defined by Tuesday. Look at these dew points over southeastern Texas. Low to mid 70 dew points. On the other end of the scale, we got dew points in the teens. Yeah, there's your dry line there. And there is your warm front that is going to be draped over the upper Midwest into the northern plains where the triple point could be setting up over eastern Nebraska into southwestern Iowa. All that moisture beneath very steep lapse rates are going to contribute to moderate to strong instability by Monday afternoon where we have thunderstorm juice. Again, this is how much energy the atmosphere has for strong thunderstorms that develop into supercells by the afternoon given the presence of very deep very strong deep layer shear that's going to overspread the warm sector. So look at this. We have uh, anywhere between 2,000 to 3,000 joules per kilogram of mixed layer CAPE over this region. And again, CAPE is short for convective allowing potential energy. Again, it's just how much energy these thunderstorms will exert it once they develop into maturing supercells. And then by Tuesday afternoon into the evening hours, there is your warm front draped across the upper Midwest where we have up to a thousand joules per kilogram of thunderstorm juice. And along that dry line and cold front where we have up to a thousand joules per kilogram as well. So there is definitely going to be some big time severe weather both for Monday and especially for Tuesday as these two trigger mechanisms come together and then probably even by Wednesday we might have some modest Cape values moving over Indiana into western Tennessee as well as Kentucky into northern uh, Mississippi where we do have a potential for a severe weather event to unfold there too. Another perimeter that we need to also look at is the effective bulk shear in the deep layer of the atmosphere and boy oh boy is it substantial on Monday in Western Texas? Are you kidding me? We're talking 65 to 75 knots of effective bulk shear, maybe even eclipsing 80 knots in these areas. That is enough to get supercells going. And once they get going, folks, we could be looking at all severe hazards that are going to be significant, including giant hailstones that could exceed three to four inches in diameter. We could be looking at strong tornadoes, perhaps greater than EF2 intensity. And then we could also be looking at damaging wind gusts greater than 75 miles an hour. So hurricane force wind gusts are potentially a possibility with some of these storms that do develop. And then of course, look at this shear back in here, 80 knots over Oklahoma, as well as along the boundary where we have effective shear of over 60 to 70 knots. So that is why the Storm Prediction Center here has issued that 30% risk for severe weather for northern Texas into Oklahoma and southern Kansas. And I'm thinking they're going to be expanding this a lot in their day three outlook, possibly a moderate risk of severe weather for the day three outlook if that comes to fruition. That would be the first time we've seen something like that since March of March 31st, something like that. It's been a while since we have had a day three moderate output from the SPC, but we'll see if that actually comes to fruition in tonight's forecast. And then, of course, you got your day five outlook of severe weather here all the way across northeastern Texas into Arkansas, Missouri, as well as Illinois. So any of you that live in this yellow area, you definitely need to have your weather radio ready and going because, again, there is a big risk, folks, of a severe weather event, maybe an outbreak of tornadoes 
damaging winds, and giant hailstones. Well, anyways, I hope this video was very helpful. If it was, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. As always, I like making these videos for the sake purpose for you all to learn from and also get prepared for dangerous weather near you. But you can only do that if you do support the YouTube channel today by clicking the red subscribe button below this video and leaving an awesome comment. You could also follow us on Discord at Weather Force. There, there's also an invite link in the description below this video. But until next time, I'll be back with you more tomorrow.